Today, I will show you how to integrate Phaser with Ionic 4. So we will be using the latest Phaser version, which is uh, version 3, and the latest Ionic version, which is the Ionic version 4. Okay, so first thing you will do is to create a, a blank Ionic app. So Ionic, well, also I assume that you have uh, knowledge with Ionic, so I'm not gonna tell you about how to install it and set it up. So that's a requirement here. So Ionic start, let's say phaser game or Ionic phaser. And then we want it to be blank. Okay. So this will create a new Ionic project. We will use Angular because that uses TypeScript. Ionic start. Uh, we'll be creating a new project named Bionic Phaser, and it's going to be blank. This is the template, right? So let's wait until it's finished. All right, perfect. Now, now that it's done. Let's open that project with our Visual Studio code. Let's do that here. Let's go to that project first. Then open that with Visual Studio code. All right, so I'll switch to the Visual Studio code screen. Just give me a moment. Right, so we have our project open here in our uh, Visual Studio. Let's go to full screen so you can see better. Right, so now that it's done, you will have this structure. You can see an SRC. This is a, a standard, uh, what you call this, Ionic structure. And if you do Ionic serve, will open in a browser and you will see a stand, standard Ionic app. So let's just see that so that you can see that it's working fine. But our next step would be de deleting the home folder because we won't need that. We won't need any routing unless you are planning uh, multiple game instances in one Ionic app in multiple pages. So you will you might want to keep this one for routing purposes. But for our purposes, a basic uh, Ionic app uh, with phaser integration, we won't need that one. Okay, now it's open in our browser. Let's switch to that. So this is the screen that you will see uh, when running that standard uh, Ionic app. Okay, now going back to our Visual Studio code, I have already deleted that home directory. Now we have to adjust the app routing so it won't have any home path anymore redirect to home instead we will be opening its own component there we go so this should work fine let's see let's switch to the browser you should see this blank screen let's add a test here you have to change this one as well ion content the test right so this should show test there we go. So that's our basic Ionic app. Now the next step is to convert that. No, not convert. The next step is to install Phaser into our project. So going back to Visual Studio Code, let's cancel this for now. Clear that one. So we just, we just want to install the latest Phaser. So npm install Phaser at latest. So this will be installing Phaser into our project, the latest version. So let's take uh, a moment while that's doing its job. I think the latest version of Phaser is 3.24. So if you want to be sure, well, you can see this here, right? But if you want to see the version that you have installed, you can do npmd's Phaser just to see that it's properly installed in your project. npm list will get this one right so now you have confirmed that phaser is installed 
in your project. Next would be importing that here so that you can access import Pacer from Pacer. As you notice, uh, Pacer is already recognized by TypeScript, but it's never read because you haven't used that yet. But you will also notice one error here. This one declared can only be used with an default import when using the allow synthetic default imports so let's do that let's do typescripts advice and add this one to our ps config let's open that one just simply add that here and set that to true right now you will notice no more error right so now we have successfully imported pacer into our project uh the next step would be so let's do the phaser coding now. So first you will want an instance of your game, phaser game. That would be uh, phaser game. And then the config for your game, that would be phaser types four, and then the game config. We have created two global variables here, and then we want the we want to initialize our phaser game here after everything is set after the platform is ready, status bar, and everything else. Especially that the splash screen is already hidden, we will want to initialize phaser here. So let's create a method here, initialize phaser. Now, what this will do is first set our config, and then we will set the phaser game, new phaser that game. Then we will pass the config here. Right, so this will create a new phaser game based on, uh, on the config that we will pass. So um, just a few basic configurations here you want to type you know, type phaser auto. So the canvas, the let phaser decide the canvas that will be used. We let's just set width of 24 and a height of 224. Then um parent here. So we haven't done this. Um so let's go back to the app component. As you can see here, we have the test, right? So let's create a div. This will be the canvas. Give it an ID of game or anything you want. Uh, but this is important. And then once we have this canvas set inside ion content, this is important. It has to be ion content. Uh, let's go back to the component. And then you have to give the ID here to the parent so that it will recognize uh, the parent or where the canvas uh, will be rendered. And then you will want to pass a scene here, the first scene that you want to show in your game. And then, yeah, that's a basic config. So now, um, I believe you will only see uh, a black screen if we try to run it here. Also, I am expecting an error here that we will solve later. But first, let's try to check. Oh, we haven't called this yet, sorry. So, is that initialize phaser so that this will run this code and will create a phaser instance. Okay, so this is the error that I'm talking about, ActiveX object. So this is a common error. Actually, I have a link here where I've seen that one that can easily be solved by going to going to your TS config and then here in the libraries you want to add script host here and you will notice that that error will be gone. Oh you have to start it over. Okay as you can see the error did not appear. These are some just 
uh, warnings and stuff, but you won't see the objective X. And if you go to the browser, it will now show our canvas. See, so this is a phaser canvas that you have integrated inside uh, Ionic. Now, as you, uh, as you can see, the scale is uh, very small and that's a challenge for mobile devices if you want to develop a mobile game. So you will want to study about scaling in phaser. But let's let's do an, uh, a very quick example of how to scale your game in phaser. So very simply, you can just let's scale here, and then the mode will be um, usually you will want fit, but as you will notice, let me show you. So the width of your canvas is now fit in the screen, but you'll see the height is not uh, fully, full screen, right? So you might want to do, let me go back to that screen might want to do envelope this one will try to scale your screen so that everything all of the screen will be covered with your canvas but some of your uh, canvas will be covered because uh, it I mean it will be cut off will be cropped so you will want to study camera in face in facer so that's supported also okay so basically that's it. You now have a, you have integrated phaser into your Ionic app. Um, but let's try to continue a little bit to pass a scene here. So let's say this is uh let me show you the code. We have to pass a scene here. We haven't created a scene yet, but let's try to create a screen. So first scene, and then we, we don't have that yet. So we have to create in the app, new folder, scenes, then first scene, and inside that. This will extend, will extend phaser scene. So everything in the phaser scene will be accessible in this class. So it will have a constructor, config will be passed by default. We will pass that config into the phaser scene. Right, so a phaser scene will have um, preload, will have a create, and then will have a update. This is the basic structure of a scene. So in preload, you will want to load all of your assets here. Uh, in create, you will want to add, this is where you add your assets to the scene. And then in update, this runs every 16 milliseconds. Game logic here. This is where all your game logic will be uh, processed, right? Like checking for health, if it's zero or what. So that's it. So this first scene will be loaded into our, uh, into our game. So you have to in import that here and then pass it to the scene. Now, if we run that, okay. So this is uh this is the scene that I was talking about. We don't have anything inside yet. So just to prove you that uh, Ion the Phaser three is working perfectly with Ionic four. Let's try to add uh very simply just add a sa an asset there, an image and uh, load it, display it in the center of the screen, right? Let's do that now. So inside the first scene, you will want to preload. Oh, wait, so let's find an asset first. I think I have one here. I can just copy that into our project. Um, let's see this one put it in, inside the assets. So in Ionic, there's already an assets folder, so it's better to reuse that. So this is our um, image that we want to display. So let's go back to the first scene. 
let's load that one. So this that load that image. So you can load uh, multiple things. You can load audio, sprite, sprite sheet. So now we will just uh, load an image. So you give it a key. Let's call this a pirate. And then let's point it to assets. And then jacksparrow.png. So that's it. We have an image loaded, but it's not going to be displayed in our in our canvas. You have to add it here in create. So add it to our canvas. You have to this that add um, image. Then you have to position it. So let's position it sixty by sixty, and then this texture will be the image that we loaded. We will call. We will use this one. This is the key that we will be using. So that's pirate and frame. Let's forget about that for now. Frame is very useful in sprite sheets, but this is a single image, so we don't need to add a frame. So with this code, uh, the Jax bar will be displayed in our screen. So let's see. Switch back to our browser. There we go. So this is our our sprite but uh, you will notice that it's very blurry that is because uh that's anti-aliasing so if we are working with pixel art you have to set this here in your configuration let's go back to the code so here back in the configuration you have to set uh render Pixel art, set it to true. Uh, that would be crisp. That would be displaying as crisp. So if you're gonna be working with pixel art, this is very important to you. So let's check that out. The image should be crisp now, and not blurry. Perfect. If you can notice that, let's zoom in. There it is. So no blur, no smoothing, just uh, the pixel art. So I guess that's it. So this is a very simple, we have integrated Pacer 3 with Ionic 4. Very easy. So congratulations, you are now first step into making your first mobile game. Thank you for watching and goodbye.